Welcome back to our channel. We hope you'll find valuable content here. If you enjoy our channel, please remember to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more. Let's dive in. In the early hours of October 7, 2023, the serene landscapes of Israel were disrupted by an unexpected onslaught. This wasn't just a minor disturbance, it was a full-blown storm of aggression. Hamas, a group known for its confrontations with Israel, had launched a large-scale attack. But this was different from their usual skirmishes. The intensity, the coordination, and the sheer scale were unprecedented. It was as if a local theater group suddenly put on a performance worthy of Broadway. The streets that once echoed with the laughter of children and the hustle and bustle of daily life now resonated with sirens, explosions, and cries of despair. The aftermath was heart-wrenching. Over 1,400 lives were lost, and the scars of destruction were evident in every corner of the affected areas. Buildings that once stood tall were now reduced to rubble, and the air was thick with grief and disbelief. How could this have happened? Why was this attack so different from the ones in the past? The shadows behind the scene, Iran's potential role. As investigators and analysts began to pick apart the events leading up to the attack, a shadowy figure emerged from the backdrop, Iran. Now, Iran's disagreements and confrontations with Israel are no secret. They've been like two magnets with similar poles, always repelling each other. But this time, the suspicions were stronger. The meticulous planning, the advanced weaponry, and the sheer audacity of the attack hinted at a guiding hand, a puppeteer controlling the strings from behind the curtain. But why would Iran get involved? What would they gain from such a move? To understand this, one must dive into the intricate web of Middle Eastern politics and rivalries. Iran has never been a silent spectator in the Israel-Palestine conflict. They've often been accused of funding and arming groups that oppose Israel. It's like a grandmaster in chess, always thinking ten moves ahead, always strategizing, always plotting. The Changing Sands, the Abraham Accords Amidst this backdrop of suspicion and intrigue, another piece of the puzzle comes into play, the Abraham Accords. These were groundbreaking agreements where nations like the UAE, Bahrain, Sudan, and Morocco decided to recognize and establish diplomatic ties with Israel. It was a historic move, akin to two old rivals suddenly shaking hands and deciding to be friends. But not everyone was happy. For Iran, this was a betrayal. These nations, which had once stood by Iran in its stance against Israel, were now cozying up to their adversary. It was as if the rules of the game had suddenly changed, and Iran was left scrambling to make its next move. The unseen hand, external support behind Hamas's advanced attacks. A shift in the winds, the unprecedented nature of the attack. Every now and then, in the world of sports, a relatively unknown team suddenly rises to the occasion, displaying skills and coordination that leave spectators in awe. Similarly, on October 7, 2023, Hamas, while known for its confrontations with Israel, executed an attack that was markedly different from its previous endeavors. The meticulous planning, the synchronization of the assault from land, sea, and air, and the sheer scale of devastation were unlike anything witnessed before. It was as if a local band, known for its modest performances, suddenly played a symphony worthy of a grand orchestra. The whispers and murmurs, suspicions of external support. In the aftermath of the attack, as the dust began to settle, questions arose. How did Hamas manage such a sophisticated operation? Was there an unseen hand guiding them, providing them with resources, intelligence, and strategic insights? It's akin to that local band suddenly having access to high-end instruments and a world-class conductor. Something had changed, and the search for answers led investigators and analysts towards a potential external influence. Iran, the potential puppeteer. The spotlight, amid these speculations, turned towards Iran. Historically, the relationship between Iran and Israel has been tumultuous, to say the least. 
But what raised eyebrows was the possibility of Iran aiding and abetting Hamas in this particular assault. Imagine a seasoned coach secretly training a budding athlete, providing them with techniques and strategies to win against a formidable opponent. The reasons for such a clandestine alliance could be manifold. Perhaps it was to assert dominance in the region, or maybe it was a move in the intricate chess game of Middle Eastern geopolitics. The bigger picture, geopolitical implications. The potential involvement of Iran in the attacks by Hamas isn't just about a single event. It's a piece of a much larger puzzle. The Middle East, with its rich history, diverse cultures, and strategic importance, has always been a hotbed for geopolitical maneuvers. Countries, both within and outside the region, have often vied for influence, forging and breaking alliances based on their interests. In this grand scheme of things, the attack on Israel could be seen as a move by Iran to reassert its position, challenge the status quo, and send a message to its adversaries. Iran's motivations and the implications of the Abraham Accords. The historical tapestry, Iran and Israel's rivalry. In the annals of history, rivalries have shaped the course of events, from the battles of ancient empires to the cold wars of modern nations. In the Middle East, the rivalry between Iran and Israel stands out as one of the most intense and enduring. Picture two proud and ancient civilizations, each with its own rich tapestry of history, culture, and beliefs, standing on opposite sides of a vast chasm of disagreements. Iran, with its Persian heritage and Shiite Islamic beliefs, has often viewed Israel, a Jewish state established in 1948, with suspicion and animosity. This isn't just about territorial disputes or political power plays, it's a deep-seated ideological clash that has simmered for decades. The Puppet Masters, Iran's Support for Anti-Israel Groups Over the years, Iran has not been a silent spectator in the Israel-Palestine conflict. Instead, it has actively supported groups that oppose Israel's existence. Imagine a powerful patron sponsoring and guiding a talented artist, providing them with resources, training, and a platform. In a similar vein, Iran has been accused of financing, arming, and training groups like Hamas and Hezbollah, with the aim of challenging Israel's dominance in the region. The Winds of Change, the Abraham Accords in this intricate dance of geopolitics, a new move emerged that took many by surprise, the Abraham Accords. These were historic agreements where countries like the UAE, Bahrain, Sudan, and Morocco decided to recognize and establish diplomatic relations with Israel. It was as if longtime rivals on a chessboard suddenly decided to swap pieces and play cooperatively. For many in the region, this was a welcome step towards peace and stability. But for Iran, it was a jolt. These nations, which had once echoed Iran's sentiments against Israel, were now extending a hand of friendship to their old adversary. It was as if the rules of a long played game had suddenly changed, leaving Iran recalculating its strategies. The perceived betrayal. From Iran's perspective, the Abraham Accords were more than just diplomatic agreements, they were perceived as a betrayal. The Accords represented a shift in the balance of power in the Middle East, with nations that once stood by Iran now aligning with Israel. It's akin to longtime allies in a game forming a new team, leaving one player feeling isolated and cornered. Hamas, the Zealots of the Holy Land The Birth of Hamas, Origins and Evolution In the labyrinth of Middle Eastern politics, Hamas stands out as a significant player, especially in the context of the Israel-Palestine conflict. Born out of the First Intifada, uprising, in 1987, Hamas emerged as a resistance movement against Israeli occupation. Picture a group of passionate individuals coming together, fueled by a shared cause and a desire for change. Over the years, this movement evolved, gaining both supporters and detractors, and establishing itself as a formidable force in the Palestinian territories. The Ideological Foundation, Jihad and Resistance At the heart of Hamas lies a potent blend of religious zeal and political ambition. The group adheres to a jihadist ideology, which, in this context, 
refers to a holy struggle or resistance against perceived oppressors. It's akin to a fervent belief in a higher cause, a conviction that drives every action and decision. For Hamas, this jihad is not just about reclaiming land, it's a spiritual battle, a quest to uphold their interpretation of Islamic principles. The ultimate objective, eliminating the state of Israel. One of the cornerstones of Hamas's charter and beliefs is the complete elimination of the state of Israel. In their eyes, the entire territory, from the Jordan River to the Mediterranean Sea, belongs to the Muslims. It's a vision of a land free from Israeli control, where Palestinians can live without the shadows of occupation. This objective, however radical it might seem to outsiders, is a deeply ingrained part of Hamas's identity. It's like a guiding star, a constant in their ever-evolving journey. The broader perspective, land, religion, and identity. To truly understand Hamas's stance, one must look beyond the headlines and delve into the intricate tapestry of history, religion, and identity. The Israel-Palestine conflict is not just about borders or territories, it's a clash of narratives, a battle of stories that have been passed down through generations. For Hamas and many Palestinians, the land is not just soil and stones, it's a testament to their history, their struggles, and their dreams. It's a sacred trust, a legacy that they believe must be preserved at all costs. Russia's role, geopolitics and the oil chessboard. The grand game, geopolitical maneuvers. In the vast expanse of global politics, nations often move like pieces on a chessboard, each vying for a strategic advantage. Russia, with its rich history and global influence, is no stranger to this game. Over the years, Russia has been known to play its cards close to its chest, making moves that are often shrouded in mystery and strategy. In the context of the Middle East, Russia's interests and actions are intertwined with a complex web of alliances, rivalries, and economic considerations. The Tripartite Agreement, A New Alliance Recent times saw the emergence of a tripartite agreement between the US, Saudi Arabia, and Israel. Imagine three powerful players forming a team, each bringing its strengths to the table. Such an alliance could have significant implications for the balance of power in the region. For Russia, this agreement is not just a diplomatic development, it's a shift in the tectonic plates of geopolitics that could impact its interests and strategies. The Black Gold, Implications for Russia's Oil Revenues Oil, often referred to as black gold, is more than just a commodity, it's a lifeline for many nations, driving economies and shaping foreign policies. Russia, being one of the world's leading oil producers, has a vested interest in the global oil market. The Tripartite Agreement, with its potential to influence oil production, prices, and distribution, could have ripple effects on Russia's oil revenues. It's akin to a change in the rules of a game, where a player must recalibrate their strategy to stay ahead. The bigger picture, meetings and coordination. Amidst these geopolitical shifts, there have been whispers of meetings between Hamas, Hezbollah, and the Iranian regime. Such meetings hint at coordination and planning, possibly in response to the changing dynamics brought about by the tripartite agreement. For Russia, these developments could either be opportunities or challenges, depending on how the pieces move on the geopolitical chessboard. The Shadows of Coordination, Meetings Between Hamas, Hezbollah, and Iran The Players, Understanding Hamas, Hezbollah, and Iran In the intricate theater of Middle Eastern politics, three entities stand out for their shared interests and objectives against Israel, Hamas, Hezbollah, and Iran. Picture a trio of musicians, each playing a different instrument, but when combined, producing a harmonious yet powerful symphony. Hamas, originating from the Palestinian territories, Hamas is known for its resistance against Israeli occupation. It's like the passionate violinist, playing the tunes of struggle and resistance. Hezbollah, based in Lebanon, Hezbollah is a Shiite militant group with strong ties to Iran. Imagine a cellist, resonating with deep and powerful notes, echoing the sentiments of Shiite ideology and Iranian influence. 
Iran, a major regional power, Iran has historically positioned itself against Israel's interests. Think of it as the conductor, guiding and influencing the orchestra, ensuring that each note aligns with its broader vision. The meetings, whispers of coordination. In the world of diplomacy and strategy, meetings are where plans are hatched, alliances are forged, and strategies are devised. The rumored meetings between Hamas, Hezbollah, and the Iranian regime are no different. Picture a secretive gathering, away from prying eyes, where the trio discusses their next moves, shares intelligence, and coordinates their efforts. Such meetings, if they indeed took place, indicate a level of planning and synchronization that goes beyond mere coincidence. The implications, a unified front? The potential coordination between these three entities suggests a unified front against Israel. It's as if the trio, having practiced in isolation, suddenly comes together for a grand performance, each player complementing the other, producing a melody that's both harmonious and impactful. This coordination could mean shared resources, intelligence, and even joint operations, amplifying the challenges Israel faces. The bigger picture, a shift in the balance? While the immediate concern is the potential threat to Israel, the broader implication is the shift in the balance of power in the region. A coordinated effort by Hamas, Hezbollah, and Iran could challenge the existing dynamics, prompting other players in the region to recalibrate their strategies. It's like a new player entering the game, forcing everyone to rethink their moves. The oil nexus, tripartite agreement and Russia's stakes. The liquid gold, oil's global significance. In the global arena, oil is more than just a commodity, it's a powerful tool that drives economies, influences geopolitics, and often becomes the epicenter of conflicts. Picture a vast ocean of black gold, with nations as ships navigating its waves, each vying for a larger share of the treasure. Russia, with its vast reserves and influence in the oil market, is one of the major players in this ocean. The Tripartite Agreement, a New Geopolitical Equation The recent tripartite agreement between the US, Saudi Arabia, and Israel is not just a diplomatic alliance, it's a strategic move that could reshape the Middle East's geopolitical landscape. Imagine a game of chess, where a new alliance between some major pieces changes the dynamics of the board. This agreement could influence various sectors, including the oil market, which is of paramount importance to Russia. Russia's concern, a threat to oil revenues? For Russia, any shift in the Middle East's geopolitics, especially one involving major oil producers like Saudi Arabia, is of significant concern. The tripartite agreement could lead to changes in oil production levels, pricing strategies, or distribution networks. It's akin to the tides changing in the ocean of oil, potentially affecting the routes and fortunes of the navigating ships. For Russia, this could mean fluctuations in its oil revenues, prompting it to recalibrate its strategies. The bigger canvas, beyond just revenues. While the immediate concern for Russia might be its oil revenues, the tripartite agreement's implications go beyond economics. It could lead to new alliances, rivalries, and shifts in the balance of power in the region. Russia, being a global player, would need to navigate these changes, ensuring its interests are safeguarded and its influence remains intact. It's a dance of diplomacy, strategy, and foresight, with oil playing a pivotal role.